In this lecture, we are going to talk about some high frequency current sensing technique in digitally controlled converter. So, first we will talk about need for current sensing in switch mode power converter, then current sensing techniques and overview and critical circuit aspect in digital current mode control. So, why current sensing is required for closed loop you know feedback control, cycle by cycle current limit because we know about the current mode control you know cycle by cycle current limit. Then we also have robust compensation because if we use a current mode control, then we can virtually represent the, uh, the converter like a, you know you can rep we can inductor will become virtually a control current source. So, by that way we can very easily design a compensation, robust compensation is possible. And also we can implement very advanced control logic, nonlinear control like a trajectory based, charge based control and various nonlinear control can be implemented. And finally, current sharing like in case of multiphase converter those are necessary. So, the current mode control is needs to be very useful uh, you know to achieve very fast transient response and, and so on. But it is equally challenging if you are going for high frequency the current sensing itself is poses a challenge how to sense the inductor current. So, typically the current sensing technique. So, you have one is the sensing resistance right you know if you take an inverter uh, like an inductor suppose you are talking about a buck converter. So, suppose this is our buck converter and this is our input voltage. Now, we have this inductor right. So, one way we can put a sense resistance here and then we have a capacitor and this is our inductor a resistor load resistance. Now, this you can put a sense resistance plus minus and this sense resistance if you put the issue will be it will additionally you are incorporating resistance in the in the path of inductor. So, your equivalent resistance effective equivalent resistance will increase. So, as a result your conduction will still increase and also you have voltage gain will get reduced because we have discussed in our earlier NPTEL course. But this can be useful to sense the inductor current you know more, almost the full inductor current can be sensed. One is the inductor DCR current sensing. How does it work? So, suppose if you have an inductor, inductor have its own RL which is not accessible, it is a part of inductor and suppose you are putting a capacitor and an external resistance which is like say capacitance you know I would say compensating network, this is your uh, capacitor compensation cap capacitor you know and this is your L. So, in this case DCR sensing we want to match the time constant of this block and this block I will discuss and the fed base or we can sense the current through the fed either high side fed or the low side fed. So, current sensing using current sense resistor. So, this is the one. So, we can put a resistance this is a shunt like a current sense resistance and then across that we can use and you can use a differential amplifier and that way we can get the sense voltage. In this case you know the problem might be you have to be careful if you are going for very high power high voltage application then your terminal may be exposed to this. So, you have to be careful about the selection, but you can also use a resistive divider. So, you have to be very careful about this and also in this sensing since you are tapping the two terminal voltage and you are putting a separate current resistor sense resistance each resistance will also have some parasitic inductance. So, this is a parasitic inductance and this may introduce some spike in the inductor current. So, if your this is your actual inductor current then the sense inductor current can have some spike here some spike here. So, it can have some spike here and this spike may be due to this parasitic inductance. So, you have to be very careful about this. So, this we are talking about the current sense resistance based approach, then it is increasing the op-amp gain result in reduction bandwidth. That means, what way is the best? 
if we put a large resistance then the losses will be more and that is not acceptable because it is in the power path. But if you take a very small resistance then you need to use a high gain of the op amp so that you can get sufficient voltage corresponding to the current and high gain if you increase the gain of the op amp then the bandwidth can reduce. So, you have to be very careful even for a small resistance you have to be very careful about the op amp design should it should have a very high signal to noise ratio ok. Then bandwidth of the op amp must be at least 10 times the switching frequency because we need to provide sufficient harmonics to represent the actually triangular shape current waveform. Then using current sense resistance the accuracy because very very highly accurate with a lower in a lowest sensing error, but very low temperature coefficient, but it can be used for various application, but it has an additional power law and you also need an separate differential op amp and all this arrangement. Now, current sensing using sense resistance the ESL effect must be considered that we have discussed because it will in, introduce spikes. ESL can result in ringing at the switch node particularly when there is a turn on that means if you have this kind of thing. So, it can introduce spikes here this kind of spikes here that we have discussed and add ripple to the current sense signal ok and avoid sense resistance with long loop. So, you have to be very careful about that means you should not even if you put a resistance the suitable package should be selected you should not use like a large lead resistance and that will introduce more induction. Then the DC sensing we have discussed because inductor has its own internal DC resistance and you are putting an external resistance as well as the capacitor. So, here the time constant of this branch should match the time constant of this branch and then we have to take the differential voltage across the capacitor and that will corresponding give you the sense voltage which corresponds to the inductor current. How does it work? So, if you obtain this you know all this calculation it turns out that actual inductor that is the voltage across the capacitor which is the Vcx this voltage across the capacitor will virtually become I L into R L where R L is the DC resistance of the inductor if you can match the time constant ok. But this method is nice there is no physical resistance placed in the inductive path, but it may be difficult to actually estimate the right value of R L that is one thing or even if you are using an inductor with a very low DCR then this can be affected by noise because matching time constant can be very sensitive it can be very sensitive because and if you take a larger DCR then the loss it will be lossy. So, this way this technique is good, but you have to be very careful because it can be a sensitive technique. So, the parasitic resistance of the inductor is used and there is physical resistance is not needed and it can be low voltage high current application these are very useful, but this cannot detect saturation inductor saturation cannot be detected because this assume inherently that inductor is in the linear region and that is why you are using all the time constant calculation, but once it enter into saturation the mathematical equation which is the representation that is no longer valid. So, it cannot detect ok. Another way is a FET base implement that, that means your switch. So, if we use a power switch then you can use you know this is a power switch, but you can use a mirror of the power switch that means you know these are the power switch is MP the sense MOSFET is MS then current to be sense that is I, but you can create a mirror that sense current error amplifier control. So, that means it can be a current mirror approach can be used and that can give you a measured that means information of the current which is going to the actually power fit. So, you are not putting any resistance in the power stage, but you are because this can be used in the IC integrated circuit implementation these techniques are useful. Now, another way you know in this case when you are using this uh, uh, that means the current sensing fed base we have to be careful about the ratio of current that means what is the ratio of the sense current with respect to the original current and that depends on the W by L ratio of these two transistor that means your MS and MP. So, selection of this transistor they are 
ratio of W by L is very important and that means they are highly sensitive to their W by L ratio. So, you have to be very careful about this particular factor. Now, once you use the sense resistance this approach then either you can sense or you can also, but it is generally not recommended to use the resistance in the, the switch path because any parasitic inductance can create a loop that so that can be LDIDT can be very high and it can damage the switch. But if we want to use switch uh, you know we can use a FET current, if you want to use a physical switch it might be possible, but you have to be very careful and typically it can be used in integrated circuit. So, high side current sensing is good in analog peak current mode control because you are actually sensing the on state current. But if you want to do digital peak current mode control, so this is a high high current sensing I am telling about. Now, so it does not require the, the good thing is that the ground it is not referred to the physical ground. So, that means the ground bounds issue may not arise that it can detect the fault because if there is any fault from the load side to input voltage this current can be that means that fault current can be detected from the high side switch that means the load to uh, you know then common mode range amplifier depends on the input voltage. So, you have to be careful about this high side current sensing here if we consider then if we want to implement peak current mode control in analog it is possible. But we want to implement digital peak current mode control, can you use valley current like a low side current sensing. In low side you can put a resistance just below the low side switch and you can simply take it is a ground refer, so it is a low side sensing that means lo low common mode voltage it is very inexpensive many application you use, but again you have to be very careful about the parasitic of the resistance the packet selection is important otherwise it will introduce inductance in the switch path ok. But it cannot detect the fault condition such as load shot to ground ok and the single ended measurement. So, it is easy to do single ended measurement. Now, in case of digital peak current mode control suppose this is my actual inductor current. Let us say I am using I am sensing the low side current I am just sensing my sensor has like I am just using let us say this is my axis again this. So, I am sensing this now if I take the sample here this point if I take the sample that means let me use a different color if I take the sample here then I can emulate in the digital controller I can emulate the inductor slope. So, typically this emulation slope has to be that means we are talking about the fully digital current mode control. So, I can emulate the slope inside the digital control. So, this is like a emulated inductor current. Emulated inductor current. And this can be realized is to realize the peak current mode control using fully digital current mode control. Digital current mode control we can use a low side current sensing also and if we go for mixed signal current mode control mixed signal where the current loop is analog using constant on time. And this is a very popular product technique in the commercial product. So, you can use simply the valley current mode control using constant on time and the current loop is inherently stable, but you cannot you should not use a fixed frequency valley current mode control which is unstable for due to ratio low due to ratio operation ok. So, that is why this mixed signal with analog current loop mixed signal current mode control with constant on time is a very popular which require only low side current sensing. In fact, I have discussed in lecture 3 some example of multi-phase smart power state that means if there are multi-phase converter there are many such phases and each phase has its intelligent power state where it has a hub base switch with driver and it also have a current sensor which senses the low side current sensor ok and it emulate the high current current uh, that means it emulate the, the rising slope 
but it actually senses the falling slope. So these techniques are important and that is why uh, you know these currents are very accurate and constant on time is a very preferred choice for multiphase converter control. So the current sense amplifier typically we can use a dedicated current sense amplifier with proper biasing and all or current sense amplifier generally has a low drip precision integrated circuit common mode voltage can be greater than supply voltage large input impedance and it can have a fixed gain it is unlike that you know a regular amplifier where the gain can be adjusted here it is a gain is flexible fixed and this is the waveform of the board uh, that we will be uh, you know showing our nptl course hardware case where the blue one i mean so green one here the green one this is the the probe current probe this is from current probe sorry current probe it is coming from the current probe and this is coming from this is coming from the sensor current sensor and we are using this is the inductor current so we are using the shunt register base that means the, we are putting a resistance in series with the inductor for this course and we are using then we are using instrumentation amplifier to do that and we will discuss when we will talk about uh, our PCB design aspect but in this course we will be using sense uh, current and this is to show the how the sense current look in compared to the actual current which is using the probe they are quite representative. So, we can go ahead with the various implement, but you can see there are still some spikes at the every switch node point, but since if we go for peak current mode control mix signal, since we will be uh, using after the latch operation that means one the switch is turned off then only the noise is coming. So, that means this noise will not affect the operation and if you go for we are not going to show fully digital implementation in hardware, but in hardware if you go for fully digital we can take this sample clean sample here and emulate the current flow this is also possible. So, this actually shows the you know apple to apple comparison between the current sense resistance followed by the amplifier compared to the current which is obtained by the current probe high bandwidth current probe and they are reasonably well and this will be used for our closed loop control. So, in summary we have discussed what is the need for current sensing then what are the current sensing technique like a different type of DCR current sensing, resistance based current sensing and also the FET current sensing and we have discussed some critical aspect in digital current mode control design. And then in the subsequent lecture we will be talking about you know other like a mixed signal circuit then PCB design aspect some aspect with a schematic and finally what are the step for APGA prototyping and implementation. That is it for today, thank you very much.